Celine Dion, the great singer who's known for hitting high notes and full of sophistication and style. But other than her great voice and one of her famous songs from the Titanic soundtrack, My Heart Will Go On, do we really know her? Like for example, why would a 26 year old young lady marry a man who's 53 years old? Well, let's find out. Okay, with careful research, I found out that Celine Dion met her now late husband when she was only 12 years old. They began dating secretly when she was 16 years old and he was 39 years old. It didn't become public until she was 19 years old and he was 46 years old at that time. It was rumored that there was an unexpected pregnancy that was quickly terminated upon their first encounter. What's also weird is that the media and us, being the viewers and fans of course, didn't question this odd relationship. Now, if this was back in the early 1900s, it would have been that uncommon. After all, my late great-grandfather married my great-grandmother when she was only 15 years old. But Celine Dion's relationship was in the 90s. Now, to understand someone, we need to first go deep into the past of that individual. Let's start with her late husband named Rene Angeli. You see, Rene was born in Montreal, Quebec, Canada on January 16, 1942 from a father of Syrian descent and a Canadian mother of Lebanese origin. His father, Joseph Angeli, was born in Montreal to parents from Damascus, Syria, and his mother. Alice Sarah was born in Montreal to Lebanese parents. Both the parents were members of the Melkite Greek Catholic Church. Rene started out in 1961 as a pop singer in Montreal. He formed a pop group called La Baronette with childhood friends Pere Labelle and Jean Bond. His friend friends in his group had some hits during the 1960, mostly translations of English language pop hits from the United Kingdom or United States. Together they managed the career of two successful Quebec entertainers, Rene Samard and Jeanette Reno, among many other pop stars at that time. They parted ways in 1981 to each become solo managers. In 1981, not long after being terminated as Jeanette manager, Rene heard Celine Dion's demo tape when and then he considered being a potential producer for her first album. He soon later became her agent as well. However, he continued as a manager until June 2014 when he had to step down due to his illness and um, fight with throat cancer. Now, now let's hear about Celine Dion. Celine Marie Claudette Dion was born March 30th, 1968. She was the youngest of 14 children to the parents of Tavis and homemaker Adamar Dion a butcher both of French Canadian descent. Dion was raised a Roman Catholic and a poverty stricken, but by her own account, happy home in Charlemagne. Music had always been a major part of the Dion family. On August 13, 1973, at the age of five, the young Celine made her first public appearance at her brother Mikkel's wedding. Therefore, she continued to perform with her siblings in her parents' bar on a small piano. From an early age, Dion had a dream of being a performer. In a 1994 interview with People Magazine, she recalled, I miss my family at home, but I don't regret having lost my adolescence. I had one dream and I wanted to be a singer. That's when her brother, Michael, sent in her singing to Renee of Nothing But a Dream, translated to English though, but originally sung in French, that her mother wrote. Upon hearing it, it brought tears to his eyes. Renee was then determined to make her a star, so he funded her first record called La Vux du Bon Dior, which later became a local number one hit and made Dion an instant star in Quebec. Her popularity spread to other parts of the world when she completed in the 1982 Yamahe World Popular Song Festival in Tokyo, Japan and won the Musician Award for Top Performer as well as the Gold Medal for the best song with Telemet Yai de Amour pour tu, after becoming well known in her part of the world. She then decided to learn English and made her first debut with the Yunusan in 1990. Then shortly after she released many that we know and became the artist she is now. That's the latest sit by our French Canadian pop star guest uh, who's coming out here next, Celine uh, Dion. Celine. Celine Dion, yes. Marking her second English song to top the Billboard charts from her debut English album. At 23, uh, 
She is far from uh, new to the music scene, having produced four platinum yes. and five gold French albums in Canada. Arnold as the first uh, French-Canadian artist ever to win the Best Female Vocalist, the Album of the Year at the Juno Awards, which is their Grammy. Their equivalent Awards, of the yeah. Grammys. Yeah. So here she is, Miss Celine Dion. Welcome to America. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be oh, here. Oh, yes. And what absolutely. a powerful voice comes mm. out of this very petite and tiny body. Petite, petite. <laughs> Thank you. And you come Thank from you. a musical family as well, huh? Yes. I have 13 brothers and sisters. <laughs> All yeah. of them sing, play something? Everybody plays instruments and sing. And I'm the baby of the family. Is that right? And I'm a singer. And my parents were musicians also. And they wanted their own orchestra, so they had all of you. <laughs> exactly. They almost have an orchestra. I'm kind of the accident of the family. Well, you because my the parents last one? before. Well, you know, my parents had uh, a couple of twins, uh -huh. and they didn't want to have children anymore. It's like enough, enough. to enough is enough. Uh -huh. And six years after I was born. No kidding. But I'm very proud to be here. Very much. <laughs> very much. So you learned English, we understand, three years ago through a Berlitz course, right? Yeah. I went to school because I couldn't speak English, and I wanted to sing. I was singing in English when I was little, but I, I didn't really understand what I was singing at that time. What were some of the songs? Do you remember them? Uh, what a Feeling, those kind of songs. Oh, yeah, sure. And, and kind of songs. And Aretha Franklin songs and mm -hmm. like music. And um, I was singing because I liked it. Mm -hmm. And one day I said, I would love to have a big career if it's possible and go as far as possible. Sure. And I would love to talk with the people also, not only singing one song after the other, but also sharing something else with the people actually conversing exactly so i decided to go to school and now how long does a bullet practicing. course take these days um well it depends when i went to the school i went two months every day nine to five five days a week it for was two months for two months well, it was not, not easy it's not easy but it's it fun. works yeah it works yeah, <laughs> sure definitely it well now your, your parents are still entertaining and uh they were, when they were younger they were performing with my family they were doing touring in the province of quebec and now they're I still with my parents, but they don't do music anymore. But the rest of my family, they yeah. all sing it. They all have their groups, and three of them they're they're doing it professionally. And you bought your folks this new home, is that right? Yeah, I, I just had to make it house. feel so fabulous to be well, able to do that for them. Well, you know, my parents they worked really, really, really hard. They gave us everything. So to, today I'm 23 years old, and I want to live with my parents. Still, they're going to be here, and if I can bring something to them, it's like it's buying a sure house to my parents. Money. It's like nothing to compare what they gave to me. Well, how did you how did you crack through, Celine? I mean, you know, you, you, you were singing, mm -hmm. kid and so on, but then what happened? Did you I grew up in the, um, around musicians and instruments, and uh, I was like, telling my mother, I want to sing, so please, you know. Mm -hmm. She said, okay, I want you to do it professionally. And she wrote my first song. And one of my brother and me wrote the music, just at home, very simple. And we, we went to a very cheap studio in Montreal, and we did record the song for a demo. And my brother said, I'm going to send this cassette to a famous manager in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So he did. And we waited a couple of days, no answer. So my, my brother called and said, um, yes, we sent you a cassette. And um, I know you didn't listen to it because you would have called me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so he said, OK, let me call you back. So the manager listened to the song. And he called five minutes after and he said, I would like to meet the girl. Right. And I went, I was 12 years old, very shy, with my 12 mother, years. 12 years old. And I went to see the manager. We've been working together for 10 years, and this is my 10th album. And he, oh my he mortgaged his you know, the whole singer. Yeah, you went around and you wouldn't have paid your dues. But he then believed in you so much, we understand he mortgaged his own house just to everything. To yeah, he was managing the most um, uh, famous uh, singer in, in Quebec. And then, um, you know, I don't know, they had a fight or something. I just got a falling out, we call it. Yeah. And uh, anyway, he wanted to go back to school, but anyway, he asked me to sing in front of him when I went to the office, and he did, we decided to work. He decided to work with me, so I was very happy. Mm. I feel like it's like my, my second father. See, that's almost. awesome. That's what a lovely story. story. Yeah. yeah. Like Moving forward here now. With all of this information, I now have a clear picture on why she mistaken the love and well-disciplinary Renee as a father figure that she was probably neglected from as a child, being the youngest of fourteen children. Although she was also very spoiled, I'm sure, hence Tamar, and Celine's father, whom said in an interview that he originally didn't want kids. Heck, Celine was a mistake, and he wanted Celine's mother to have an abortion, but her mother, deep religion, kept her from doing so. 
You see, the love and discipline from Renee turned into infatuation and then love, the things she never received from her father. She saw Renee as her father, a genie, and her god, a man who had mortgaged his own house to find her first album. He took her from the dumps of Quebec and made her a star. His age didn't matter to her anymore. I also believe the same thing happened with Renee, or did it? You see, even though he was her biggest fan, no doubt, but what Renee also loved is her obedience and the fact that she's easy to control. Something he never could do with his ex-wife who divorced him because of his infatuation and obsession with Celine. You know, a lot of older men seek young, naive girls because it's easy to control them, hence Prince Charles. It was told in many interviews uh, with Celine of her mentioning how controlling and strict Renee was, although she said in a loving way as to say he took business very serious, although that's true, but let's get real. You see, she wasn't allowed to do a lot of things little girls her age were doing. He controlled every aspect of her life. As she said many times, she wanted to look sexier and keep up with current fashion, you know, like females her age. But Renee didn't allow her to, and she was often dressing like a woman beyond her age. Although prior to him becoming sick and then unfortunately dying, her dressing style had slowly changed. You see, he wanted her to look older, very subdued, and very sophisticated. Now, you would think that this would have gave her all the reason to leave him. Well, no, it didn't. You must understand, although Celine was bilingual and talked and sung in many languages, but she wasn't very bright. All she knows is music. If you wish to sit down and try to have a stimulated conversation with her about politics, Greek philosophers, history, pretty much all the things I talk about on here, she would be so lost and then she probably tried to steer the conversation away to stuff that she knows. Take a look at this. Albums, our first guest is the greatest selling female uh, recording artist of all time. Her new CD is called Taking Chances. Please welcome back the one and only Celine Dion. <laughs> your song to be hey, her theme song. Music is very therapeutic and I have to say that I'm 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 touched. Yeah? Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about a possibility of a female president? Well you go girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know you know me in politics. Yeah. You're not gonna get in the. Uh, you're not gonna give your opinion on the the politics. I I'm the same way. I have no idea. I, I have no idea what's going on. I I don't. I'm not. I don't know. No. I'm I, I'm not too much into politics stuff. All know? right. Well, it seems like you're. So the questions are: Will she finally let her hair down and do all the things that she was deprived from, or is it just too late? This video is not to bash Celine, but to educate women who get lost in the dream that they want and forget to enjoy life and their youth. Oh, and don't ever let anyone control every aspect of your life where you're left crippled when he finally passes on or leaves you or anything of that nature. Because then you'll be left acting like a child at times when you're an adult. You have one life. Live it to the fullest. And with all of this, have a wonderful day. God bless you all and talk to you all later. Bye.